Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for the Media Speaks Saturday, and I don't know if I'm going to be part of it because Google is not allowing The Correct Views to do a hangout. Kyle and D. Lake like to make jokes about it being the computer, and I wish that it was. The computer is as top as you can get right now. Newest Windows, newest everything. A Firefox nor Internet Explorer will allow Google Hangout to work. So that's why there haven't been any live shows. I have absolutely no earthly idea how to fix it. I do have the uh, HDEF working very well, which is what we're going to use for today's Dunce Cap of the Month Award. I do want to tell you Saturday, um, we're going to have Mrs. Sawyer. She is the lady who unfortunately lost her husband to Ebola. Um, he was attempting, I believe, to fly in to see their children. He was a citizen, to see their children on their birthday. Two daughters that were uh, celebrating it at the same time. He didn't make it. So, um, I mean, you hear a lot of people talk about quarantining and what are your rights, uh, what are other people's rights to have you quarantine. Well, I think of all the people that would be able to really shed some light on this, it would be her. And you will see her, Mrs. Sawyer, 2 p.m. On, uh, me on the Media Speaks, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Friends, we're going to get into the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. We have so many dumdies to get to. For those of you that are new to the show, once... A month, The Correct Views, gives somebody the dunce cap of the month. And I end up with so many idiot stories, though, that there are runner-ups. And a lot of people like to leave comments about which one they think was the dumbest. Uh, they get mailed a dunce cap. They get mailed a certificate. I mean, it's real. They actually get a dunce cap. I spend a small fortune every year mailing these out. You can help me, The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. All right, guys. The organic prepper, Michigan Department of Agri forces farmer to dump 248 gallons of organic milk and break 1,200 free-range eggs. I'm glad there's nobody in Michigan. I'm glad Detroit is doing so well that they could just throw away the healthiest eggs and the healthiest milk. And don't tell me organic isn't the healthiest. It, it absolutely is. While Americans in the nearby city of Detroit face life in third world conditions, unable even to afford running water, the state of Michigan decided to direct its resources towards cracking down on a small food co-op standish for having the utter audacity to provide butter, milk, cream, and eggs to people who bought shares in the organic dairy. The Michigan Department of Agriculture, and the reason I do these shows isn't just to be funny, it is so that you contact these people and let them know that you heard about it and were outraged. That's why I do these. The Michigan Department of Agriculture, who you should contact, must be so proud of their deeds after they forced Joe and Brenda Golombiski, the owners of High, uh, High, Hill High Dairy, uh, support Hill High Dairy, and Jenny Samuelson, the owner of My Family Co-op, to dump out 248 gallons of moo juice to break 100 eggs and to destroy an undisclosed amount of fresh cream, butter, and cheese. According to the High, the High Hill Dairy page on Facebook, the agents from the, F, the MDA stood over the family watching as the food was destroyed. Here are the pictures, and it shows that them doing it. According to the owners of the dairy, the MDA threatened to arrest the co-op owner, Jenny Samuelson, for selling food without a license. However, the farm is a co-op where people must buy shares. The MDA, however, said that the co-op contracts were invalid and therefore, instead of being shared, the food was being sold. No, it wasn't. That's a lie. Because co-op members had paid for their shares, technically the MDA stole food that belonged not just to the Gablinski family, but to every single member of the co-op. One member wrote angrily, a member who I hope is suing, this is such a shame I paid for these products and this is what happened, they are criminals. Government stealing all of our food. I paid just so that Benny and the farmers didn't have to carry the burden all their own, a crying shame. Shame on Michigan's Department of Agriculture. Friends, that's how, that, that, that's how stupidity goes because 
people don't stand up against this thing. Well, I'm out here. I'm making video. I'm still in my freaking work shirt. I look like an idiot. I'm out here doing it. Help me. Expose these people. Talk about it on your Facebook. Make this kind of thing stop. Theblaze.com. Video. Woman in labor not allowed to cross the street to the hospital over Obama's impending motorcade. But he, he, he likes women and he cares about them. The Secret Service works closely with state and local police counterparts in planning for and conducting motorcade movements for the protectees. Secret Service spokesman Brian Leary told the outlet in an email, It is always our policy to prepare and facilitate medical emergencies, medical fights, ambulances, etc. in the fastest and safest way possible. Yeah. Uh, for for everybody uh, that uh, isn't the president, that doesn't apply. Witnesses say a pregnant woman in labor was prevented by authorities from crossing a Los Angeles street to a hospital Wednesday because the road had been closed for President Barack Obama's impending motorcade. Oh my God was coming through. He was coming through. He's like a god. The unidentified woman was barred from walking the few hundred feet to the hospital for at least 30 minutes as authorities waited for the president's motorcade to pass by, witness Carrie Clifford told the blaze early Thursday morning. Well, I think it's interesting that in uh, in Libya, uh, uh, Gaddafi was able to you know drive down the middle of his busiest streets and not have uh, Arabs shoot at him. And let's face it, Arabs are, are in many instances in that country killing each other if you're the wrong sect. They never bothered him. Going up and down the streets of Libya. Obama can't even risk a pregnant woman crossing the street. A spokesman for the LAPD declined to comment on the incident Thursday morning and referred the blaze to the Secret Service. A spokesman for the Secret Service did not immediately return to Blaze's call. Do not cross the street when God is coming. What a joke. Uh, current Nemo Prison Planet. Florida cops arrest mother for allowing son to play in park. This is going to be one a lot of people want to give the dumdy to, and I'll tell you, it came close. A Florida woman discovered this recently when she made the mistake of allowing her child to go to a neighborhood park. The police told the woman that her child was unsupervised. She was arrested and charged with child neglect, which is a felony. The seven-year-old Dominique Guracy was spotted walking along unaccompanied by two pool lifeguards. The snitches demanded that the child tell them where his mother was. They asked me a couple of questions and I got scared and ran off to the park and they called the cops, said Dominic Greasy. The police found the boy in a local park and took him home. His mother was confronted and then arrested. The police told her numerous sex offenders reside in the vicinity and that children need to be supervised. Well, either you shouldn't let the registered sex offender live near the pool if you're so inclined to such laws. Maybe you should realize that the lifeguard is probably going to make a really good, just making, you know, I think if you're molesting a child in the pool, the lifeguard is hopefully going to notice it. Um, for another thing, there's nothing that says that a seven-year-old cannot play in a park. There's no law against that whatsoever. He just basically kept going over that there's pedophiles in this and that basically the park wasn't safe and he shouldn't be there alone, the mother Nicole Ganey told the West Palm Beach news station. My own bondsman said my parents would have been in jail every day. So there you go. She's looking at a pos uh, she's fighting a felony charge. You can support her. You really can support her. You can call the St. Lucie County State Attorney's Office and complain. And uh, you can you can definitely look her up online. I'm sure you can get her through her bondsman. Nicole Ganey, West Palm Beach, needs your help. Um, cause she's being harassed for letting her kid play in a park. That's why. Uh, more dumdies. I got more dumdy dumdy dums. Cops advise store lockdown in response to Star Wars stormtrooper. The presence of a man dressed in a Star Wars stormtrooper outfit prompted police in Salina, Kansas, to lock down the business on Monday. Again, think about how, I mean, in real life, how badly you would be able to see out of a stormtrooper's outfit to begin with. Even if you were somehow born under a, lived under a rock and have never heard of Star Wars, you could kind of tell that this is a very cumbersome outfit to do anything in. A business owner who must be an idiot 
and a second man mistook the plastic gun the stormtrooper was carrying for an AK-47 and called 911. The police advised the owner to lock down his business, despite the fact of open carry being legal in Salina. That's why they got the Dum D Award as well. You're allowed to carry a gun. You should lock down your business if somebody is carrying a gun. Numerous police were dispatched and discovered the man identified as Christopher Burns wearing the Stormtrooper outfit. It turned out Burns, who was known as Star Wars Sam, good name, was shooting a short video for a Vine website. It's a, uh, like a dumb deer, or a, a, a fails, wins, vines, that kind of thing. According to Cake, K-A-K-E, a television station in Wichita, Kansas, police informed the filmmakers on the potential consequences of their actions in public. Star Wars is such an iconic image that I was a little bit surprised that someone would see a stormtrooper and fear when you know it's been around since the 70s, Burns told KSAO, a new station in Selena. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. We're about halfway through the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, and you can support this show, yes you can, by going to The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. Every penny you give me goes to a better show. Um, you can go to Amazon.com, look up um, The Lucky Leprechaun, Risen, which is a persuasive essay on the historicity of the resurrection of Christ, and a horror novel I've written that's also very socially based. It's called A Sleep Unknowing. If you like gory, spooky stuff, it's really good. And if you're going to Cedar Point, and you should go because it's winding down. This is going to be where the next the next really warm spell we get at Cedar Point is going to be when the coasters are just everybody wanting to get on and the kids are about to go back to school. That's going to be helpful for lines and you're going to need a place to stay. The Seacrest Motel. All the other hotels are about to go insane on prices. Through the roof. Especially now that they're losing uh, so much traffic. So what, what are you going to do? You're going to go to the Seacrest Motel. You're going to get a wonderful bed. You're going to get air conditioning, heat. You're going to get beautiful tub. You're going to get everything you want in a room. You know what you're not going to get? You're not going to get charged $120 or more. Why? Because you listen to the correct views. Go tell Vicky. She'll likely who's checking you in. You heard about it from TCV, the correct views, the Seacrest Motel. Guys, got a couple more to get to. This this one, when I read it, it's it's as cruel as it is dumb. It's not the cruelty of the month award. But to be this stupid is almost you know what I mean? It's it's very, very hard to 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 figure out here exactly. I'll not to give this to them, but I'll let you guys be the judge. Police gun down dog in front of a six-year-old girl for showing its teeth. Now I understand nobody wants to get bitten by what could very likely be a vicious dog. You don't know if it's if they've had its shot. You don't know any of that. And I get all that. I really do, especially from the cop's point of view. I've been bitten by dogs a few times in my life, and it's not fun. However, if the dog is around the six-year-old girl, then the dog must not be frothing at the mouth and rabid. Tasers? No, you just use tasers on the elderly, right? You think I'm kidding? Look it up. Police gunned down a one-year-old dog as its owner, a six-year-old girl, watched on in horror. The dog was shot in the head, that means brains everywhere, as it stood on the family's front lawn because the animal started showing its teeth. I think if the officer shows his... Smash him in. The six-year-old mother, Nicole Echelin, said their shepherd mix Apollo had returned to the property in hometown, a suburb of Chicago, after briefly going missing on Friday afternoon, but that police arrived soon afterwards with guns drawn. He started showing his teeth. That's when the officer shot him. You know, couldn't use a taser. No, 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 no. Said Eklund, adding that her daughter immediately fell to the ground and began screaming. Neighbors and witnesses Ayo Nico Torres said that the dog had no history of aggression and wasn't barking when police arrived. The dog wasn't dead. He was kicking its legs like it was trying to run while it was laying on the lawn. Ten minutes 